Yes, hello, I'm Tony Johnson, and welcome to the 2003 Air New Zealand NPC. And what a cracker it should be. First up is Otago vs Taranaki, exclusively live from Carisbrook. And it's going to be such a big battle here at the Brook. And while this NPC season, it'll be hard to beat the highs of last year's season with Southland champions and Rampley Shield holders. Anyway, let's go down and see what some of the players' points of view are. Thanks, Tony. Nisbo here. I'm down understands with Otago captain Tane Randall. And, well, Tane, it's important to get off to a great start to the season, isn't it? Well, I'd like the other to say, uh, you know, you just got to get in there, try hardest, you know. Uh, we've been trading all uh, week, and uh, we've got to come out with some fun with some great results here. What are your thoughts on this Taranaki side? I know they've been a bit of a bogey team for you in the last couple of years. What are your thoughts on them? Well, you know, <laughs> you can't just say that about all the teams, you know, because the teams try hard, and Taranaki will... You know, um, last year they had sort of a, a medium this year, so uh, hopefully, I think this year they might want to just come out and um, try their hardest and go hard, yeah. Well, new coach under the Wayne Graham, has he been making any differences? Oh, yeah, there has been some changes in the team, and, uh, you know, he's got, giving us some uh, good tips, and, yeah, he's a good guy. And so you're full strength for tonight's game? Uh, <laughs> well... <laughs> Our full strength in that game is uh, to be, you know, um, keep the opposition in their 22 and defend well and uh, run it out. <laughs> See you, mate. Thanks, Dan. And back up to you, Tony. Thank you, Nisbo. So there we have it. The NBC for 2003 about to kick off with Otago and Taranaki live from Carisbrook. Let's just go down under the stands with Taranaki coming out. the match referee for this match, Steve Walter Fair, will knock on the door and here come out Taranaki onto the stadium. Go Taranaki! Taranaki have an exciting lineup this year with the return of James Kerr from the Crusaders, also Daryl Lilly in the back line as well and Shane Austin who had a great debut season last season will now be looking to make up for it in this year's 2003 season. But always traditional, Taranaki have a big board pack and that'll be the difference this year. Paul Tito is captain, he will be a big key to Taranaki's success in this year's NPC. So here we go now, the match official Steve Olsen or Harville will knock on the door of the Otago team and get their season underway. And here they go on to Carisbrook. Led by their inspirational captain, Tane Randall. Missed out on the All Blacks this year for the Tri-Nations, but he'll be wanting to make the end-of-season tour. Otago have a new look back line, but still the old names of Ryan Nicholas, Tony Brown and Byron Callagher are still there, and also in the forward pack. No Paul Miller, he has been left to Southland. An exciting team this year, Murray Mixed. Well, certainly, this both. They certainly are an exciting team, and they should be a real force in this year's NPC. Now, let's just go down to kick off. So, there is the ball for the NPC to kick off this Ready, year. Yep. Ready? Referee yeah. Steve Wolf from North Harbour will check for two captains, and it'll be Tony yeah. Brown to get us underway in this year's 2003 NPC. It goes down. Oh, what a run! What a run by James Kerr! That's right! <laughs> And the opening second, can you believe it? To number 14, James Kerr. The lost name of New Zealand rugby is back with a great try. In the opening second of this game, Taranaki look brilliant so far today. What a great try, wasn't it, this boat? Great move there off the back, Paul Tito, that inspirational man again. Got it off to James Kerr. And he was away. Great try. So here we go. Daryl Lilly will try and convert that opening try. That great try to James Kerr. The beauty. Here we go. The crowd don't like him. Oh, and he's put it right through the post, spiralling round. So Otago now have to come back. It is five, seven points to nil to Taranaki. 
So here we have a Targo no Taranaki 7. And it'll be Tony Brown to restart us here at Carrisbrook. Opening blow scored by oh, Taranaki and it's nearly taken again. But he's referee has ruled that it's line out to Otago. Oh, okay, um, 28. B. C. It's already a great match here, isn't it, Tony? As we see oh, just that. And that's a oh, try. So number seven, Sam Harding. What a great try. What a comeback here for Otago. And now Tony Brown will have a chance to level the score. There was the offloader. Tane Randall, a great move there. So it's seven to five, kick to count. So here we go, Tony Brown looking to convert these to two. Oh, and he's done it beautifully right through the post. So it's Otago seven, Taranaki seven, with about two minutes left to play in the first half. So there we have it, Otago hit back just before the break. It's Otago seven, Taranaki seven. Steve Walsh blows time on, and it'll be Daryl Lee to get us back underway. It goes down to the Calvin Middleton, who tries to get the offload now. He's playing it again. He's leaped for the line. What is the referee? He says, no, it's a try. Try to Joe McDonnell, number one for Otago. What a great try there, wasn't it, Murray? Well, it certainly was in this boat. It's run along the back. That's a great try. And the big forward ran it up and scored a well-deserved try. Go with the try to Joe McNeil. Tony Brown has a chance to put a target in here by Moore, and he's done that. A great kick. Tony Brown, a very, very good kick. And it's now Otago 14, Taranaki 7, with about a minute to play in the first half. So there you see the situation now. It's Otago 14, Taranaki 7. And it will be Daryl Lee who gets back underway with about a minute left in the first half. It goes back. Tane Randall's always made the mistake on his own line. What does the referee call when he's called a 22 dropout? So that'd be Tony Brown. Oh, and he does the fake pass and he puts it downfield. That's a very, very good relief and pressure kick out inside the 22. And it'll be Andrew Hoare, of course, made the All Blacks last season. He'll be throwing the ball in. Throws the ball in, taken by Big Tito at the front again. And the referee's playing advantage to Yellow. Early tackle, no advantage. <laughs> so Steve Walsh has blown it up for an early tackle. And now we'll see. Word, and look at this, we'll just get in there. Alright, I've noticed that you're doing this a few times. <coughs> player, come here. You've been tackling the player before he's even got the ball in some circumstances. I know it may be a bit of momentum, but just keep it down, okay boys? Sure. Yep. I'm awarding the penalty to yellow. Yeah. Early tackle. Thanks, yeah. So there's the bad boy, Calvin Middleton. What are you taking? And we'll see the shot at goal to be taken by Dale Rawley. Over 50 metres this one. This should be hard one. So here is Dale Rawley to put Taranaki, close the gap. Here we go, he comes in. He, oh, and he struck it off the base of the post. So no go there, and Otago is still in the lead with a short time to play. 40 seconds, boys. 40 seconds. If he's just indicated 30 seconds left. So here we go. So here we go. So Targo's 22 and he's put it down and he's kicked it all the way there. And it'll be a 22 dropout to Taranaki. So here we have Del Lee to take the dropout. And he's taken it in the hole and he's knocked it on right on halfway. Next time it'll be half time. And the referee has just indicated that the next out will be half time here at Carrisburg. Hold. Let's see these big tooth packs. Engage! <laughs> Taken in there by the halfback for Taranaki. It's a ball, you the lose it. Picks it up. Oh, what a run from Austin. He hands it off. It's a ball. Bryce Warman's taken in there. He keeps the line, and it's a try. What a try to Chris Marsoli. Chris Marsoli has come up the ball. That's a great try. Off the base of that scrum, he ran away. That was a great try. 
I tell you, players can't believe that Taranaki are back in this ball game. So here we go, this is to level the scores. Daryl Lee. Oh, and he's done it! That is a beauty to Taranaki. And the referee says that it's half time. So at half time. Half time here at Carisbrook. The referee has blown it. And it is Taranaki and Otago. 14 apiece. Your thoughts on this first half? Murray Mix did. Oh, it certainly has been good. It's been a great first half. And I just can't wait to the second half. Thank you, Murray. And we'll be back after this break. So back on to the second half count the players for the second half at 14 apiece. The teams have changed side Taranaki in this one. Here at Carisbrook. So here we go, Otago 14, Taranaki 14, and here is Dow Lee to restart us for the second half. The kick off, it's a high one. Oh look at this run! Oh and he's had a foot in touch. That was uh, Muhammad Bao. Here we go, the line out called Pool Tito Tosa. Open the gap, Blue! Andrew Hoare, who's a throw in. Throws it in and he goes to the back, Paul Tito, and the ball has travelled across the stuff. Touch line, and it's a line out to Otago. Here in the second half, 14 all. Anton Oliver to throw in. He goes to Big Filippo Levy, the Fiji International. Taken back all good work by the Taranaki forwards. Great work by the Taranaki forwards. Here we go off the back of the scrum. That's a try to Sam Harding, second for today. That's a great try for Targo to get them back in the game. What a great try. Taranaki cannot believe it. They started so well, and Otago have hit back. So here we go, Tony Brown to increase the lead. And he's done it, sailing right through the uprights. So halfway through the second half, and it's Otago lead Taranaki, 21 to 14. So the scoreboard reads 21 points to 14, Otago to Taranaki. And that's a mistake by Otago. Travelling into touch off the Otago player's hand. Here's Andrew Hoare throwing in. Throws over the back. And it's gone into touch. And not straight from the throw from Andrew Hoare. So it'll be a scrum to Otago. So the Cullen will put the ball in. Puts it in just outside the Otago 22. He puts the chip in back downfield. Taken by Lily. Oh dear. Oh, look at that. There's an injury. Play on. And it's an advantage. A knock on. Taranaki nearly scored. And there was the two players in the collision. Daryl Lily and Brian Nicholas. So it's a scrum down. One minute left in the match. It's Otago up 21-14. Time running out for Taranaki, they could still snatch a draw though. Otago should be happy with their first match performance here. They have certainly played well against this big Taranaki pack. So here we go, the scrum will be set. Yeah, no, Otago, you're wasting time. The scrum will be set inside. Engage! The Otago 22, the ball goes in. Oh, booted downfield. A great play there from Byron Kalaha. Using all his experience there. They're taking it quickly. Here we go, the chip throw! Oh, and it's gone 22. dead. 22 drop out. 30 seconds left of the game. He puts a long one in and it'll be all the way back for another drop out. Here we go. Chips away downfield, does Tony Brown, and he'll get it inside the 22 of it. Of Karanaki, he's taking it quickly and he puts it into touch. They need to hold on to the ball here. I'm going. 
They're down 21 points to 14. Nick Otago Nick lead. Nick Here we go. And the referee has blown it back. No Otago thinks they've scored. So this is it. The line out, the last line out of the game. Tito will obviously contest this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the referee has made a controversial decision. So Taranaki have a last minute chance. They've oh, certainly got the, the bonus game. point. But they want the win. And we call Tito. He'll throw it out. The referee will blow full time. And Otago will draw first blood here in the NPC for 2003 in the opener. No. What a great game. <laughs> what a great game, Rick. <laughs> Players congratulate each other on a hard fought victory to Otago, 21 points to 14. I'll be meeting up in the match. can't believe it. There's James Kerr, such a great try already. And now we'll go down to Ian Smith on the sideline with the interviews. Thanks, Nesbo. Well, Paul, devastating. It went right to the last minute and he just could not pull it off. Yeah, well, our team did play well. Just came down to a bit of a decision at the end there. I thought Andre Watson could have rest the game a bit better. In what ways did Andre do a bad job? Well, that balking incident in the last 10 seconds there should have been a penalty. But he called the scrum. But that's his decision, and our team's just going to have to live with that. Good luck for the rest of the season, Paul. Thank you. And Tane. Congratulations on a hard fought win for Otago Rugby. What are your thoughts on the match? Oh yeah, it was always going, it's always going to be a hard, uh, hard account of Karanaki and uh, we proved we won it today and uh, we played hard and we came away with the result we really wanted and uh, yes, we were quite happy with that. And well, your thoughts on Taranaki, how did they hold up compared to what they... Oh, the defence was uh, better than we thought and uh, you know, they played extremely well, a great try by uh, James there down the sideline and uh, well, you know, it's... Just see some of those things, but um, yeah. Thanks, Dane, and good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. There you have it. Otago has been Taranaki by 21 points to 14. <laughs> so, all wrapped up here, the first match for the NPC season of 2001 has come to an end with Otago beating Taranaki by 21 points to 14. Oh. They help things to funny. Welcome here to Whangarei for this exciting encounter between Northland and Wellington. Of course there was a nail biter last year where Northland won in the last dying seconds of the game and we're expecting another good match this year here at Whangarei. Northland's home ground advantage this year, two quite different teams but of course both going for the same thing and that is the MPC four points today. And my co-commentator here, John Drake, certainly a great day here in Whangarei, isn't it? Certainly, Tony, you know, I mean, uh, the sun hasn't let us down today, and uh, it should be a very, very good match here today. Of course, last year, Northland had the services of James Arledge. He is gone, and now they've gone in for the seven-star gold medalist, Jared Going. And um, Northland should be looking to play it tough in the forts today with their big men like Glenn Taylor. Oh, certainly, Tony, you know, and uh, should be a very, very good game, mate. Right, now we're just going to go back to see, revisit from last year, what happened last year. Northland has to come back, taking in there, and it's trying to throw the high wall. Oh yes, exciting stuff last year. 
And of course, we're looking for another ripper today. The teams are ready. And of course, now we'll just go downstairs for the two teams. They've finished their training. Let's just go downstairs to welcome onto the park Wellington. So referee Calvin Deaker of Hawke's Bay will be the referee tonight and he'll knock on the door of Wellington to bring them out onto Whangarei here in beautiful sunlight, led out by their captain Tana Humanga. Wellington have a new look lineup this year. Of course, Ricky Fuji is in the team for the injured David Holwell. There is Dion Waller at lock, such a key player. And of course, co-captain this year is Shane Carter. But of course, it'll be all down to the back three of Lomu, Cullen and Brad Lemming. And of course, inside with Umanga, the back line is a very, very exciting combination. And now let's just wait for the home team, Northland. So here we go, the home team Northland on the home ground here in Whangarei. Led by the inspirational leader, Glenn Taylor. There's Jared going, seven star, now number 10 for Northland. And of course the two Fijian Flyers, Pharaoh and Rupenny, should be a very exciting combination on the right and left wing. Also Jason Schumacher in the number 13 jersey. Young talent showing through already Super Trav experience. Let's just go down to kickoff and it'll be Jared going to kick off. Ready, Captain? Yep. Yes. Yes, sir. So here we go, our first commentary pairing of John Drake and Tony Johnson. Let's just go to them now. He's thinking as well, so here we go, and it'll be uh, Ricky Fluting to kick off. And that has come off a Northland hand. And John Drake, certainly a great day here today in Fong Rasmus. Oh, certainly, you know, the locals told me that it'll be a great game here on Saturday. And they certainly have it right. This is a great game. Carter throws, and it's a dodgy throw. But here we go, and taken down in there by Waller. Oh, Carter's knocked it on, and that's a try to number ten, Jared Going. What a great try! Great try to Jared Going already. That was a great try. So there is the ball of Northland. It's Jared going to try and attempt to put Ooh. Northland seven points up here in their home ground of Whangarei on a beautiful day. Go on, Jared! He comes in on, he striked it to the right, so no luck there. So the score remains 5 0 to Northland in this first half. So there you have it Northland, the home team in front, five points in Norway for Wellington. <coughs> It'll be Ricky Flutie to get them back underway here today. And he does that, and it's gone the 10 metres. And a punt downfield by Going has left it right outside the line. That's a great kick there. 3-8, 32, Mecca D. And there we go, and he's thrown it to the front. It's gone back and into touch. And it'll be a line out to Northland. Quick throw there. Take it off the back. And that's a try. To number seven, Alan Tubb. <laughs> he likes it. Great try there to Alan Tubb. A classic open side flank and try. Picked the gap and went for it. That's a great try for the back of the line out. Yes, yeah, certainly was. So here we go with Jared going trying to put them at 12. To, oh, and he's just brushed it. So he's missed. So the score remains Northland 10, Wellington 0. And it looks like to be another classic like last year. The scoreboard here reads Northland 10, Wellington 0. Not good news for the Lions fans. Rookie Fluty to restart. Goes down and he's kicked it too far. And will come back to a scrum and halfway. 
Have you seen this game so far, John Drake? Certainly a good game so far. Two very even teams here, even though North have shown it on the score sheet. And the ball has been kicked dead in goal, so it'll be a 22 to Northland. Taken quickly by Jared Going. Goes along the ground. That's a great try. That's a great try to number 10, Jared Going, second for today. That is a brilliant effort. Chip and chase. Bet he had too much pace. That is an enormous try for that man there, Jared Going, second today. He's got all the points. What a great game he's having. So there we go. Northland have struck again. And the kick has missed. So Jared Goh, not having a good game with the boot, but he's certainly playing well. And it's Northland, three tries over Wellington. Lead by 15 points to nil with a short time to play in the second half. So Northland lead 15 to nil over Wellington. Here we go, Ricky Flutie. Next out is half time, the referee has just indicated. And Rukini fell down, but we'll beat the ball with a touch, and that'll be half time. A very, very entertaining first half here. With Northland leading. By 15 points to nil. What a great start, wasn't it, John Drake? Certainly, Tony. They've had a great start to this game, and they'll be looking to continue that in the second half. The crowd come on for half time, as they usually do, to get some autographs. We'll be back. With the second half after this. So here we go at Whangarei, it's Northland leading Wellington by 15 points to nil, and it's Ricky Flutie to restart us here. He restarts us, goes down to number eight there, and he's put the chip through, and it's out just in the side of the Wellington 22. So it'll be Shane Carter who back into this game. Oh, he does the little throw at the front, taken in by Dion Waller. Well, it takes it upfield, takes it off back to Jason Spice. Jason Spice, a big run, he's been killed. And the foot was out in touch. Unlucky there. Get out of there. And it'll be Shane Carter to get it back. And the referee wants to call up the two captains. Guys, now settle down, it's getting a bit hot tepins out there. Oh, that right? Yeah. A bit hot out there. And getting a bit frustrated with the score, obviously. But we'll just calm it down, okay? But they're just getting in there. Yeah, and no, they're killing the ball from being used. I'm just no, not having no, that. Come on. Give it back, Tommy. Give it. Okay, line out here, one for ball. Make it all time. Put it again. We won. We need Great Wall of China. The ball goes to the front and it's gone out. And it'll be a line out to <laughs> Northland. <laughs> Here you go. He's looking to find the big captain Taylor. Eight, four, and he's found him. Goes to Taylor. Back over top. Throws the ball in field. It's in goal. And it's a knock on. Oh, well, that's disappointment there for, all, for North Auckland. And it's a knock on. So a minute left in this match with Northland ahead 15 points to nil. Jason Spice put the ball in. Sorry, ref. Referee getting frustrated. <laughs> and now it's been taken up the field by Big Dion Waller. Plunges towards the line. That's a great try. What a great try to Dion Waller. 
just ran it up field, used his brute force, and that's a great try, but it's a little too late for Wellington. David Hole yeah. is injured, so many, Ricky Flutie ran the extra two try, and he's missed it away. So it's still now Northland 5, Wellington 5, 15, no, Northland 15, Wellington 5, with a short time to play in the second half. So here we go, 40 seconds left. Wellington need to be the next scorer. Goes down deep inside the 22, taken in there by Rodney Soalialo. Off the back, and no, the try has been disallowed by Calvin Deeker. Straight in, and it's a penalty to Wellington. What will they do? They'll take the tap, and Rodney Soalialo straight through again. What a great try. Brute force has broken through again for Wellington. Oh, certainly the, you know, being a former prop, I got to like that, even though it was scored by number eight. Chopped off the dreadlocks, I think that's a good move. What a great try. That brings Wellington right back into it. So here we go. Ricky Flutie to try and close the gap to three points. Oh, and it came off the upright. So it's Wellington now trailing by five points. So Northland 15, Wellington 10. With 30 seconds left, this should be a very, very close game like last year's. Well, certainly, Tony, this is where, you know, the hands are sweating, you're all nervous, and you just hope like hell you can just hold on for your teammates. So here we go in beautiful sunshine here in Whangarei. It'll be a line out to Shane Carter. Shane Carter's thrown it to the front and it's gone out off a of Wellington hand. Oh no, it's come off the, off the Northland player. And here we go, last play of the game. Can Wellington steal victory? Big rustling forward. They're going forward and there's a punch to the line. What a great try. There. He can't believe it. The crowd can't believe it. The game is tied and the kick will decide it. What a great run there from Phil Nathangali, number six. That's a great run. Power again for Wellington's third try. The scores are tied. The kick will decide it. So here we go, Ricky Flutie. It's even, he's got to get this to win. Oh, and he's pushed it wide. And the referee, Calvin Deeker, plays full time here at Whangarei. An amazing game has ended. 15 all, well played by both teams. They'll shake hands. What a great game of football. And we've got Stu Wilson down the sideline with the interviews. Stu Wilson here, and we're down here with Glenn Taylor. So, how did they perform in this game? Our forwards and our backs played very well today. Our forwards got up right out there. Our defence was great. So, was it pretty unlucky that you came out with a draw? Yes, only if one, one of our kicks went over. Have you prepared, did you prepare well for this match? Yes, we week? trained a lot. Okay, thank you. Great game. Stu Wilson down here, now I'm trying to umanga. Bit disappointing that game? No, I thought we played bloody well today. Northland are a bloody hard team up in Whangarei, and bloody hell, that last half was bloody exhausting. You came back from 15-0 down. Is that, that was a great comeback. Yeah, bloody shows of confidence in our bloody team. And yeah, it's just, it's, we just played real well in the second half. Just a pity a goal kicker didn't have the right boots on today. So it really, your team really showed the hungriness to get that win. Yeah, we're real determined and we're confident we can go a long way in this tournament. And watch out for us other teams because we'll be a threat to you. Well done. Great game. Well, here in Whangarei, we have seen a beautiful match, and it's ended up at 15 apiece. We had a thriller last year, and this year's one was even better. A great result today for both teams, a draw, fairly deserved here at Whangarei. Last word to you, John Drake. Yes, certainly, you've summed it up all there, Tony. You know, a great game of football here today. You know, uh, Wellington showed great grit and determination to come back there. I thought Northland had it in the bag, but they came back. 
What a great game it was from them. Yes, it certainly was, wasn't it? That was a great performance there from the Northland team and, of course, from the Wellington team. And um, we will now leave you. Until next time, goodbye. We welcome you today to Jade Stadium in Christchurch for what should be a very, very exciting match between Canterbury and Wellington. Sorry, Waikato. Certainly a great, great game should be today, isn't it, Murray Maxted? Certainly, you know, Waikato and Canterbury, two form sides in this competition today, and they should have very, very much respect for each other. Both genuine top four contenders this year. Well, Jade Stadium has had up in beautiful conditions here. Sunshine here covers half the ground and the other half is in the shadow. Waikato are out there too in their numbers. Quite a lot of Waikato people in the crowd have made the trip down south. Now let's just go down to Smithy on the sideline with the conditions. Thanks Nesbo. Well as you can see, beautiful Christchurch weather has really showed up to the party today for this Canterbury Waikato affair. And while it's going to be a cracker of a game, the ground's hard and fast. We should see a lot of open rugby tries at their best. And while I can't really pick a winner today with both back lines so full of stars. Well, back up to you Nesbo. So well, Maori Mixter, who's my common co-commentator here today, last word for you before the game gets underway. How do you think that both teams will go today? Oh well, it's an exciting prospect today with two great teams here, Canterbury and of course Waikato. Both teams at the top of the table clash. But I'm picking Canterbury too strong at home with all their All Blacks back in the team. And at Jade Stadium, this Canterbury crowd, they've fought a fortress down here and it's hard to beat them. I mean, just listen to the music, the atmosphere is brilliant. I wish I was out there, mate. <laughs> well, thank you, Murray, for your comments. And we will now be ready. We await the Waikato team on the Christchurch's Jade Stadium. You get run to the stands of Jade Stadium, waiting for the men from Waikato. There's referee Walsh. Let's hand the ball. There's Captain Dion Muir for Waikato, all taped up. Here we go, on to Jade Stadium, Waikato. Waikato have the names an unchanged lineup with star first five, Derek Maisie getting the recall ahead of David Hill. And while Waikato have been a form team in recent weeks and they'll need to display it against a very strong Canterbury team. And Waikato, they'll look for inspiration from their leader, Dion Muir. He's been around for so long as the Canterbury music begins to play. Well, Waikato players sporting the great Walk of China. And now we're waiting for Canterbury. Richard Walsh knocks on the door. There's Ruben Thorne and the Canterbury team. Canterbury have made one change to their starting lineup. Daryl Gibson comes in in place of injured Aaron Major, of course, who twinged his hamstring at training this week. But Canterbury have got most the same team, and of course, they uh, gutted after last season's Shield and NPC title losses. We're in for a great game here today, and we'll go up to the commentary box with Nisbo and Mixted. Of course, these two teams are top of the table. Followed by Harbour. And we're all set for kickoff at Jay Stadium. And it'll be Derek Maisie kicking off. Oh, yeah. And it's gone out into touch. And it was off a Canterbury hand. Greg Smith, the hooker. Beefcake. Royce Willis, but he's misjudged it. And it's play on. Norm Maxwell's got it in there. It's a mall. They're driving towards the touch line. It's close. Norm Maxwell's still got it. Oh, hang on. 
Now, it's Daryl Gibson with the kick. And Dale Muir gets a kick away under pressure. Ruben Thorne has got the ball up. It's a maul. Mm. Oh, yes, I like to see this driving play by the forwards. Just shows the dominance on the game. And Derek Maisie has scored the opening try of the match. By Cato up 5 0 over the red and black. Yes. I call it an opportunist move, really. With a great play by Derek Maisie and Waikato. Now, Maisie, he's on an angle to convert his own try. Waikato got the absolute dream start. And that's over. Derek Maisie has got Waikato off to the dream start they've always wanted. It's Waikato up seven points to nil. As the score says, Canterbury zero, Waikato seven. Andrew Burton to get us back underway. Bit of run against play that first opening try. Yeah, and it looks like it may have come off Mark Robinson's hand as it went into touch. And Greg Smith has got a line out to throw again yeah, on the line. Please. 28, 26, 2. Royce Willis, he's missed it again. Rhys Duggan. Yeah, Rhys Duggan has scored. Yeah. White Keto have made the crowd go silent here at Jade Stadium. White Keto 12, Canterbury 0. The Kerry crowd is really getting in behind them. Maisie from the side. And that is over. Waikato 14, Canterbury 0. The scoreboard suggests a dismal Canterbury score, 14 0 to Waikato. We'll see if Canterbury can bounce back from that early setback. And Ramirez will restart again. He's getting used to this today. And it's gone dead. It's a simple move. It's gone wrong. And it's going right back to halfway, calls referee Walsh. It's gone halfway, and Waikato have got another chance to really set this match on fire. Duggan. Maisie with a drop goal. And it's just away to the right. Gutted. It's away to the right. And we're at Canterbury 22. Referee Walsh has said one minute to go in the first half. Waikato up 14 0. Drop out, and it's all going wrong for Canterbury. I kind of think this is very good for Waikato Rugby. Can we have dominated the whole rest of the rugby in New Zealand? Yes! Yeah, 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 yeah. And Roger yeah. Randall! Yeah. He's lost it forward over the goal line. Oh, and this all turning to hell for Canterbury. They just can't get the hands on the pill. Moons of a drop through. Yeah. It's out of Waikato hand. Mark Hammett will have the throw. Oh, whatever. Yeah. This pretty will go to Chris Jack. Hammett for the corner. Play on this referee. Wooden Bucker. Hands off to Caleb Ralph. Ralph is through. Royce Willis. Muir. He's low and lost it out. How much left, Ruth? Last play, sir. Greg Smith will have the line out, which will be the last one of the half. Canary got numbers in the line out. No, they don't. Greg Smith throws it. Play on. Daryl Gibson has scored an absolute cracker of a try for Canary. That's kept them in the match just on half time. That's the start of Canterbury. Great solo performance by Daryl Gibson to keep Canary in the game. Moons to add the extra two points, right on half time. That's 14-5 to Akira. What's the bet he gets it? Yes. And that's over. And we go to half time at the break with Waikato up 14 points to seven. Join us back after the break for more exciting. The game of Air New Zealand NPC. Of course, that last second try to Daryl Gibson has put Canary back into this match. 
we're at least within bonus point territory. And it's 14 points to 7. And back on to Jade Stadium come the two sides. Of course, the coaches Ozzy McLean and Ian Foster were given some harsh words at half time. While Kato just hit me out to finish off all their opportunities. And while Kato just haven't had the ball. There's Greg Somerville. He had a very quiet first half. Just not managing to dominate Deacon Manu. And we'll see it, Andrew Burdens with the kickoff. And Royce Willis drives it up. He's had a strong performance today. Good That's Lost Boyd. Lost Boyd, they're playing advantage. It's play on, says referee Walsh. <laughs> Reuben Thorne's got it in there. He's handed off to Scott Robertson. Yeah, Andrew. Oh, and Bruce Ray Harner's taking a crucial catch. And a beautiful touch finder, by the Waikato left wing, playing his last game. Last season for Waikato. Here's Mark Hammett. Go on, Bob, such a chance. Take away one. Oh Reuben Thorne wins the line out. Reuben oh Thorne. <laughs> a great try to Canterbury. Oh, and it's 14 12, kick to come. These two tries by Canterbury. Very, very important as far as this match goes. Andrew Murden is ready to convert his own, his captain's try. Okay, Hundred percent so far in this game. Come on, get it! Oh, and it's a way to the right. How crucial will that be in the context of this match? And it's two minutes to go. Referee Walsh is called. There he is. He's had a very good game. two minutes left. Fourteen, twelve, one minute, forty to go. It's all happening here. Derek Maisie had a strong first half performance, but it's been pretty quiet in the second half. Chris Jack. Hands off to Richard McCaw. Take it, take it, take it to the ground. Of course, the captain of the under 21s a couple of seasons ago. And it's been turned over by Marty Holler. Randall. Play on. Vunimbaka, the speedster from Fiji. The flying Fijian. He hands off to McCaw. McCaw's put a kick through. And that's gone out, there'll be a Waikato throw. Ray Hunter's taking it quickly. Kicked it away. Leon McDonald. Yeah. And it's a great touch finder by Leon McDonald. <laughs> and that's scrum back from where he's meant to throw it in. It's a scrum to Canterbury. That's Canterbury free kick. He never threw the ball in and ran. Dumb play by the hooker Greenspur. <laughs> They've got the drive on, the old-fashioned Canterbury drive. Dave Hewitt. Come on, Canterbury. <laughs> Hands it off to Robertson. <laughs> the crowd are getting quite harsh on Canterbury, their own team. And Daryl Gibson has scored another one. No, no, no. There was no, no. Daryl Gibson has scored the try for Canterbury. His second of the day. Now Canary just needs one more for the bonus point, so they'll be more focused on the win. A great try to Daryl Gibson, in my mind, man of the match today. And while well, Leon McDonald's taking the kick, then it'll have to Aaron, Andrew Murdens, but McDonald, of course, wearing that head gear because he's quite prone to head injuries. Lots of the extra two, and it's Canterbury up 19 points to 14. And we're back to kick off, Derek Maisie. Hasn't really had much of the ball to impress. I didn't touch it. Yeah, he touched it. No touch, that's going to be a scrum on halfway. It's a line out. Now, a line on the five metres referee Walsh well, has changed his decision. Bruce Somerville. Play on. <laughs> My kettle has stolen it. Marty Holler again. Quick oh, tap to Canterbury. One more try needed for the bonus point, and they'll go top of the table. The drop kick, and it's 22 to Canterbury. 20 seconds left, boys. That's a try. Marty Holler. Waikato number seven. It's got the try of his life. He's just been played real well for Waikato today. Snatching crucial turnovers. And finally leading to a great try. 
Derek Mays, the important kick. Put Waikato back into the lead. Boo! Boo! He's missed it! And it's 19-0. It's all locked up. 20 seconds to go. Oh, we've got another cliffhanger. The Air New Zealand NPC manages to do this so often. And we'll be back. There is a stadium clock. 19-0. And we're into referee's time. Which he's called 20 seconds. A very important last 20 seconds. The winner of this will go straight to the top of the points log. And as we're nearing the end of the competition. And Ramon's on halfway. Let's go, Canterbury! Oh, and a crucial mistake by Andrew Mertens. He's kicked it dead on the full. And it's the halfway scrum to the Mulu men. Yeah! Reece Duggan with the kick, and it's missed. Ten seconds to go! And Canterbury have got the ball on their own goal line. Oh no, this is crucial for Canterbury. Justin Marshall has gone down. Justin Marshall, he's such a key component of Canterbury. Got all the experience in the world. And it looks like Ben Hurst is warming up on the sideline. This looks pretty bad for Canterbury, but Marshall's getting up. He's determined to finish this one up the job for Canterbury. The 22 dropout, 10 seconds. Whoever scores the next points, I feel, will win. Oh, it's been a great game, Tony. It's just been so exciting to watch. Yeah. He's out and goal. This is going to be a Canary 5 meter scrum. I've got time for the scrum. Next time out, that's it, boys. Get back, Orange, get back. It's gone out. It's a draw at 19 all. With a great game of footy nonetheless. Marty Holler's try securing the draw. But they needed one of those drop goals or conversion to go over. We'll go down. It's Millie on the sideline. <laughs> With the aftermatch interview. Well, uh, can't recap that River Thorn, a bit of a disappointing draw. Did you, did you hope to come out with game with a win or? Oh, you know, certainly a disappointment with the draw, uh, Aiden. You know, it was a very tough board effort there today, you know. I mean, 19 all. Very good reflection. Two great teams, you know, top of the table clash, although I believe that North Harbour have just come away with a victory, so they'll get soft. But, uh, you know, certainly, you know, Waikato. Yeah, you know, disappointment that they kicked it out at the end, you know, I thought we had a chance there, but no, they obviously just were happy with the draw. Yeah, um, so uh, the, what do you think was the overall uh, best uh, performance today? Oh, you know, I think the backs had some good runs, you know, really good tries, you know, but the forwards also had a good go forward, and uh, yeah. yeah, we'll be looking to continue that next week. Uh, okay. Thanks, mate. Okay. Well, I'm here. Let me get the hug. <coughs> Well, I'm here with Dion Muir here, and uh, uh, let's uh, look at that smile on that face there. He's quite happy off the draw. Yes, uh, it is very tough to win against Canterbury at home, but we're pretty happy to come away with the draw. Mm -hmm. Us and Canterbury are very close to the top of the points now, and yeah, I think we played well today. What do you think uh, was the best uh, performance, performance today? Um, oh, Marty Holler was pretty good performance all around the field. Uh, I think we might go and practice our kicking tonight. Yeah, yeah that was a bit of a but, um, disappointment. Yes. Oh, well, but, uh, good game. Then. Uh, right. And there you have it. Full time at Jade Stadium. He's back up to the studio. So there we have it. Uh, Canterbury Waikato, a 19 0 draw, second draw this year in the competition. North Harbour have gone to top of the table, Canterbury second, Waikato third. Obviously quite happy with their just draw here today. Wow, what a great match it was. Wasn't it, Murray? Well, certainly, you know, I mean, the team's had some good go forward, as Rudy said in the interview. Just disappointing that uh, it came in a draw. But, um, yes, very good. Now stay tuned, because after the break, we have Southland defending the Ran Furley Shield against the old foe Auckland. 
stay around for that. But for us here at Sky Sport, from Jay Stadium, it's good. Welcome, I'm Grant Nisbet. Welcome to Invercargill, where today Rugby Park Stadium here hosts Southland's defence of the Ramfley Shield against Auckland. I'm joined by co-commentator Murray Mexton. This should be a good game, shouldn't it? Certainly should, Nisbo. Two great teams here. Southland have now had seven shield defences under their belt, and they're looking to make it eight here today against the old foe of Auckland. Great conditions here at Rugby Park Stadium in Southland. The teams are nearly ready, so let's just go down to the starting lineup. And the teams come out of the field. Firstly, the challenger, Auckland. And now come off, man. and are looking to take the shield off Southland. It'll be a tough battle up front and Auckland are looking to do it. And Southland's kicked that full mullet will lead them out onto the park to defend the Rain Valley Shield. Southland have defended the shield seven times and looking for the eight. This will be a nice, tough battle. It's a kick-off. Southland, Paul Miller picks it up. Come on, he chips it. And it goes out just before halfway. Southland, the lookalike Justin Marshall. And he's run out. Line up, Blue. <laughs> what the hell is that? Auckland, Blue? second line out of the day. These guys, 22. And it's a shocking throw. Paul Miller's got it. Divine and she's the ref. Not straight. <clears throat> Paul Miller's looking for something to do here. Everyone, The chips. Advantage over. Straight out. Advantage is over, says the ref. Auckland playing around. Carlos Spencer back. Oh, Carlos, uh, full blast. No advantage. No advantage. They call it back for a scrum. The full pass from Auckland. Oh, engage. Engage. Big scrum there by Southland. Oh, Paul Miller off the back. With the chip. Andrew! Going back, play on! Oh, drop backwards! Play on! Norgan, Carlos with the chips, hits the post! Off the post, play on! Andrew! Paul Millet swings Carlos off him! Chips it! Up and under, and... Try! Got him, Andrew! Try score, Paul Miller! There he is, Paul Miller, the try scorer! Lovely try! And Baron here looking to add the extras. Not a very hard no. kick here. No, no. And he's oh, yeah. <laughs> hit the post. That is very unfortunate. And here we have the score. Southland leading 5-0 with the shield on stake. No. So the kickoff goes. Yeah. Paul Miller takes it up. On the ground. He's a loser. And Baron oh. picks it up off the rack. Passes back, back to Paul Miller. Paul Miller puts the kick through. Carlos Spencer gets charged. That's a 22 kick. 22. Next time, out of half time, boys. Yeah. And it's a short kick, boy. Knock on. Yeah. Advantage blue. You really? Advantage Auckland. <laughs> Carry on. No, no one knock on there. Is no she behind us then? No, no, it's a knock half on time. at halfway. Half and it's half time. Great half. The Southland leading. 5-0. And here we have the shield at stake today. Southland looking for the eighth defense as Auckland come onto the field. Carlos Spencer there. And Paul Miller leads his team on with Ashley Barron following. Southland with the kickoff. And that's scrum back at halfway. Auckland discussing moves in the background. So get ready for the scrum right half. Wait for my call forwards. Hold. Engage. Yeah. They're not going advantage, Southland. Advantage. Full not put in straight. 
And Did it's not put the ball in the scrum. Two no over scrum. Stefan's ball. Hold. Engage. Hey, hey. Paul takes it off the bed. Still got it. it. Still in play. Ashley Barron making the run. It's gone back in there. Keep it down, T Blue. What is the ref? Ref calls the 22. That's a nice nudge by Ashley Barron off the knee. Find out, Blue. There's Joe, And that's well taken by the big man in the south of minor. Oh, it's a try! Ashley Barron has sneaked around the corner. And he's complete. Oh, look at that. He's very happy about that. That is a lovely try. He is a good player, Ashley Barron. Oh, he just put it right at the post. Ashley Barron, a bit disappointed with that. Southland now up 10 0 against Auckland. Looking to hold the shield. Hey, hold on, can you do the, the kick off from Auckland? Knock on, Knock on by Big Paul Miller. Scrum Blue, Auckland. Auckland feeds the scrum. Can they do better than last time? Yes, there is a better scrum. Goes for the job, Gun has missed it by a big distance. There it goes, the post, the ones are missed. 22 it is. Big Paul Miller looking for something to do here. Hurry up, Red. Come on, Red. Time wasting here. Let's go, get in, Hayden. Hayden. Oh, here. Oh. oh, great kick by Carlos Spencer. Take time out, that's it. Doesn't even have the ball, Hayden. That's a quick line out there. Kick it out, kick it Big out. Big Paul Miller. Looking for another try. Chip. Get it, get it. Oh, he's passing the field. Oh, and that's deep. Yeah. Next one time. Oh. Here's Will Guy. Let's see. Yeah! There's the big man, Paul Miller with Ashley Brown retaining the shield. The score, 10-0. And Ashley Brown holding up the shield. Great delight for Southland supporters. And we're down with the losing captain, Carlos Spencer. So Carlos, we're disappointing with that loss. Oh, yeah, definitely, you know what? Oh, I didn't, didn't get the ball much, and um, you know we just didn't have that good of a game. You know, it was just like a practice run. You know, we did not put the effort in. I'm disappointed about that. So that's a bit of an off run then. Oh, of course it is. You know, just, uh, just um, I won't mention anyone's names, but a uh, certain person, uh, uh, Hayden Richards there. How are you, Hayden? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we've got Smithy down with the victorious captain <laughs> of Southland, Ashley <laughs> Barrett. No, Paul, Paul Miller. Right. Sorry. Paul Miller here with the shield. How do you feel about this? Great one, eh? Oh, thanks, mate. You know, I mean, we always knew it was going to be tough at the end of the day, though. You know, we had got enough points on the board. We came around the world. It should be now, the right. <laughs> oh, Clint's been bitter about that. He's lots of you. What do you say about the referee? <laughs> oh, no, I feel the referee had a good game. You know, I mean, some calls that you can't change, but you know, in the end of the day, you know, it was a good one for our boys and uh, eight on the trot now, I think, for this. Well, go home, oh, you bloody well, ladies. It's a great game played Thanks, by Southland. Thanks, and there we have it. Back up to the studio. So there we have it. The Ramfley Shield stays in Southland for another year. And Southland look to make the top four. A very, very good game today, wasn't it, John Drake? Well, it certainly was, you know, a great game here at Rugby Park Stadium. You know, Southland deserved the shield, certainly. Thank you, John, and thanks to everyone here today. We'll be back after this break. But for us here, it's goodbye. Right, it's John Peters here from the Sunday News. Uh, Bob McNeil, how do you feel about your team not making the top four because of your alleged uh, money problems in the camp? Well, firstly, this salary cap hasn't been along, around too long, and I'm very disappointed in it. We're by far the best team in the comp, and, well, we don't really have any challenge in this region, so we had to look elsewhere. That's just not right. Something's got to be done about it. Now, uh, Mark Robinson, uh, North Harbour coach, North Harbour captain, uh, same question to you basically, you know, how do you feel, you know, the, you and the boys, you know, you've played very hard this year and to find out that you've 
so being done like this. We really did. We played string and card. We we uh just done. Um, well, we didn't uh. No comment. <laughs> okay, uh, Tubby Peters, uh, John Golding here from the Sunday Star Times. Um, you know, I was just wondering, you know, you know, does this affect your place next year as uh, North Harbour coach? Uh, no, I'll still be taking this job. Our boys have played real well this season. This is just a shocking news about the money. This is a question for Bob. Um, how much will you actually over the selling red cap? Hard to say, but five, thirteen million. <laughs> Some of the players asked for a bit too much, and we had no other option. There's not enough players in the franchise. Um, uh, yes, Mark Robinson. It's uh, Tokati from the Asian News here. Uh, you know, are you very disappointed that your team's not going to be in the top four this year? Well, bloody hope, mate. I mean. <laughs> no going. <laughs> Thank you guys, you may stand down now. Points table of the round robin. As you can see, Canterbury end up first with seven wins and only one loss, and of course the draw to the third place Waikato also managed to pick up seven bonus points and end up on top of the table with 37 points. Northland, a great season for them, six wins, one lo two losses, one draw. They end up on 32. Waikato third on 31, and Southland couldn't reach the effort of last year, but still made up. To 29 points. Then just outside the top four was Taranaki on 25, Wellington 23, Auckland on 22, and then of course a disappointing season for Otago, a very, very disappointing season, only three wins and only ending up with 14 points. And of course Bay of Plenty, the bottom dweller again, two seasons in a row, ending up on seven. And then of course the team that were re breached the salary cap by $13 million were leading the table but have now been kicked out amazingly from that press conference you just saw. Murray Nixton, your thoughts on the top four teams? Oh, you know, certainly a good mixture of good tra traditional teams and also a mix of new teams. Interesting to know the top of the north and the South of the South got hurt. That's going to be a very interesting to see who wins those two matches. Yes, certainly. Canterbury proving their dominance again. But the major surprise is those teams there in 6th, 7th and 8th. Wellington, Auckland and Otago. Very disappointing season from their standards. Oh yes, it certainly was, Ms. Bo. But that is not helped by injuries to those key players like an Otago to Andrew Oliver. No, certainly not. So now, until next time. We will be saying goodbye and we will see you in Whangarei for Northland versus Waikato. Welcome here to Whangarei, where Northland host Waikato in the first division MPC second semi-final. We have already seen Canterbury go through to the final after a victory over Wellington. Of course, controversy with North Harbour missing out due to a salary cap negotiation. But here we go, it's Northland and Waikato. Waikato lucky to be in the top four after they're being fifth, but of course Northland missing out. North Harbour, sorry. And um, Ari Mechstein should be a great game today, shouldn't it? Oh, certainly, Ms. Bo, a great game here. Should be in hand here at the new Whangarei Stadium. And the teams are ready. 
so let's just go downstairs. Here we go, Waikato to be led out by Dion Yoa. Waikato certainly do have an experienced lineup, but it will be the forwards of Dion Yoa, John o Gibbs, and Marty Holler that are the exciting back three trio. Also in the backs, Roger Randall, Bruce Rayhana, and Todd Miller at the back, also a very exciting combination. Ground here in Whangarei, best condition it's been in for years. There's the score, we certainly see a change from that here in the MPC Division 1 semi-final. Now it is wait for Northland, Tanipa. Here we go, the home team Northland to be led out by Glenn Taylor. Northland come onto the home ground here in Whangarei. Exciting players like the two Fijian Flyers, Vero and Rapini, and also seven stars galore in this side, including number 10, Jared Going, who of course is a Commonwealth game gold medalist. Of course, the team is captained by the legendary captain, Glenn Taylor. Now we're ready for kickoff. The referee, Paul Honus, is on the ground from Wellington, ready for this NPC first of the match, semi-final. Who will meet Canada. Canterbury in the final? Well, we're about to find out. So here we go, it's going to get us underway. Let's go boys! Kick off! We get this underway and it goes out. Yeah. And it's a line out to uh, Waikato. Uh, so here we go, it'll be Greg Smith, what? the Fiji and International to throw it in. Oh great take there by Vula Maimori. Here we go, back in though goes Taylor, the fullback. Oh and it's not, it's not across the touchline and the referee rules a line out to Waikato. The players haven't heard the call, and they'll come back to the line out to Waikato right on halfway. Uh, referee Honus, I, I really feel for that referee after last week's effort against North Harbour. Of course, being bribed to pay. And here we go, the quick throw. Here's the big rustling lock. Woodcock. Oh, that's a great try. So the big prop, Darren Whitcomb has crashed over, that's a great try, and Northland take the first blow in the fight, semi-final match here at Bungaray. Great start here for Northland, wasn't it, Murray? Well, certainly just the start that they need. So here we go, going to add the conversion. Yes, he's done it, straight through the middle. So it's Northland 7 at Waikato 0, halfway through the first half in this semi-final. So here we have the stadium uh, scoreboard, 7-0 to Northland. Here we go, David Hill to get us back underway. Halfway through the second half, and it's gone out inside the 22. This stadium getting really worn down there. You can see all the scrum marks. It's had a lot of rugby this year here in Whangarei. Bacon, As it goes to Big Bull and Rory, but it's been knocked down, and it's been knocked back, and it'll be a 22 to going, who takes it quickly, and it's gone all the way back, and it'll be a 22 to David Hall and Waikato, who takes it, and it goes out on the 22 line. Lovely star. Referee Honda's done a good game so far, hasn't he? he knows Certainly has, Murray. 28. Here we go. Close to Glenn Taylor, the captain courageous, who rustles it forward. Oh, great play here from Northland. This characteristic drive. Plunge to the line, that's a try. Second try of the night. Bulla Maimori gets it, and it's Northland 12, lead Waikato 0, with a short time to play in the second half. So here we go, first half nearly over, after this kick it's half time, and he's nailed it again, and at half time it's Northland leading Waikato 14 points to 0. Welcome back here for the second half, as you can see Northland lead, Waikato by 14 points to 0. Some would say it's an upset, but Northland have certainly had a great season this year. <coughs> well, Nisbo, one of these two teams only have 40 minutes left in their season. And I'm sort of determined Waikato don't want it to be then. They're going to have to hit back fast. Certainly. So here we go. Referee Honus runs on the field and he blows time on here. That's Thunga Rain has gone down the floor. It'll be a scrum on halfway. 
What are your thoughts on referee Harness, uh, Murray? Yeah, I oh, he certainly had a great match here today. He was criticised last week for his performance, okay. but certainly a better game today. <laughs> yes. As we see off the back of the scrum, <laughs> Mullamai Murray <laughs> reaches out, pans it off. Rebeni Thalbaumbuka has scored, and now it's Northland 19, lead Waikato nil. Great play there, great offload by that man, Villa Mamuri. Halfway through the second half. So here we go, kick to come, this to make it 21 nil. Yes, he's done it straight through the middle. So with halfway through the second half, it's 21 points to nil. Northland ahead of Waikato. So that is the score that will probably send Northland into the semi-final. Waikato have to stay on. One minute left. So which two team, one of these teams will go to the final? It looks like Northland. Here we go. 30 seconds left, indicated by the referee, Paul Honus. Chinese, Chinese, Yes, well, it's been a great performance here by Northland. Off the top again. And now it's an advantage and they'll come back. The referee has called a scrum. And the referee has called a scrum for the knock-on off the line-out. James. And the referee has just informed them that the next out is it. So here we go. No, the next out is it. The next out is it. There's no timeout. Waikato, they've fought brave today, but it's going to be... For no purpose, because Northland will be in the final. Oh, what a great scrum. Off the back, Dion Newell end his season with a great start. That's a great try. What a great run by Dion Newell. His team has lost. It's been a losing cause, but what a great play. I think one of the MVPs this year. Certainly a great player, isn't he? Well, certainly, you know, being a former number eight, I'd like to see that. And in. So that's the end. 21 points to seven. We'll go down the sideline. What a kick. What's the interview? What's Stu Wilson? Oh uh, well, Dion Muir is uh, not here today. He's already, he's already, he's talking to the news talk to his B. So we'll, we've got uh, Roger Randall here. Roger, um, you know, disappointment today for the team, wasn't it? Oh bloody ours! I mean, we just our defence was, I know what was what was the about, but our defence was absolutely poor, and uh, you know we just we just didn't have those opportunities, and Northland just came away with the result. So uh, you know, still a good season, making the top four is a good move, and uh, congratulations, good season, good luck for next year, mate. No, it's not a good, um, no, not really, it's not making the top fours, uh, nothing, nothing, nothing. Look, I feel but, sorry for uh, you, mate, No, no, no we're quite right there. <laughs> And here we have the Northam captain, Glenn Taylor, or Glenn, a great day today. Day. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm, I'm real proud of the boys, eh? we've, we've been, we've stuck <laughs> together right through the season. And, well, they showed today what we can do <laughs> when we play to our potential. I'm just proud of the boys. <laughs> good luck, mate, <laughs> thanks. Good luck for the Do final next week, Jack. Thank you. So there we have it, a great game of football come to an end. Northland coming out victors 21 points to 7 here at Whangarei. And now it's all set for the final next week between Canterbury and Northland at the Jade Stadium. How do you see that one going, Murray? Oh, it should be a great match, you know. Canterbury dispatched Southland, disappointing to Southland, you know, but they still got the Raffley Shield. Yes, certainly. We'll see you next week for the big final of the MPC First Division for 2001. Until then, Tony Hodgson saying a very good goodbye. Welcome to Jay's Stadium. Stage for the MPC First Division final against home favourites Canterbury up against the surprise merged team of Northland who have made it all the way through with a win last week over Waikato through to the final. It is a great place here at Jay Stadium. And of course Grant has been interviewing some of the players this week. Let's just go and check out what the captains think about this game. Well, Glenn Taylor, you know, congratulations on the season. Great season, isn't it? Making it through the final. Yes, our team has been playing well this NPC, and we've done very well to get to the NPC final. Well, you know, any nerves going up against Canterbury at Jays Stadium? It's going to be a big ask for you. Yes, it's always a tough match against Canterbury at Jays Stadium, and especially at a final. Yeah, Canterbury, well, they play brilliantly on the day. 
Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I mean, you've had a superb season yourself, you know. And I'm sure you're so modest you're going to accept for the whole team, but, you know, I mean, it certainly has been a great season for you. Yes, uh, our team's been performing brilliantly. We've been playing, I don't know, one of the best seasons we've ever had. And I just hope we continue at this game. I hope you can too, mate. Good luck for the final. Thank you. Well, Ruben Fulham, Canterbury captain, you know, great season this year, hasn't it? Yeah, well, I'm real proud of the boys. We've had a few injuries here and there, but we've got through it all. And just looking forward to this final. Now, you've finished top qualifier after North Harbour's scandal, you know. How does that make you feel? Well, it sort of cheapens it a bit. Well, oh, not really. Well, I reckon we have been the form team of the tournament, and, yeah. Well, Saturday night at Jamestown, it's going to be a big atmosphere there, isn't it? You know, are you hoping for a big one? Yeah, there always is one, and they're really getting behind us, and it lifts our game 110%. Good luck, Ruben, for Saturday, mate. Thank you, Grant. So that was the two captains. Back up to you, Tony. So Grant Brisbane with two very nervous captains. They are all out of the ground trading here. It really will be a big one tonight, won't it, Murray? Oh, certainly, Tony. You know, two great teams, I believe, the two best teams have made it here tonight. And, uh, you know, they should be big. Well, let's just go and look around the town and some pulled up to the final. And when we come back, we'll be all ready to kick off. So from the TAB, it'll be a good game this weekend, uh, North London Canterbury. Won't be able to guess who I'm feeling this weekend. Canterbury, the favourites are Canterbury at a dollar fifteen to Northland at five dollars. Should be a good game. Should be a good game this weekend, um, Canterbury. This is the scene earlier on today, Northland entering Jade Stadium first into their home locker room, followed by the Canterbury team. It's really a big atmosphere here, isn't it, Murray Mixted? Oh, certainly, this is great atmosphere. I haven't felt this. What a great game, NBC Rugby Final, coming up. We'll be back after this short ad break. So there we have it, NBC balled off, balled up over. The teams are now ready to play. Here's the cheerleaders. And they've got, look at this, there's the NBC trophy. Here we go for the final. Here we go, the fireworks are underway here. It should be a great match here at Jade Stadium. The cheerleaders are here. The fireworks are going off and it's all for that beauty. Look at this, this is amazing. So there we go, we'll be back after this short ad break. Just minutes away from kickoff here, as we look at the two starting lineups for today's match. Where do you think the keys are in this match, Murray Mixed Oh, well, obviously the two number 15s have had both had great seasons. Liam McDonald, the All Black, up against Hayden Taylor, the up and cover of the Northland side. But of course, right through that back line, there's just so much great matchups. The Nathan Major matchup against Jason Schumacher shall be a beauty. Also, the two speedsters of Rupini Thelthel and Booker up against Joe Maddock should be another one. But where I think Canterbury will have it over Northland today will be in the kicking with Aaron Major and Andrew Mertens, two handy kicking options. Yes, of course, Jared Going has been in superb form for Northland in the first five row. Also, the two other win, Caleb Ralph up against Piero Puhead. That should be a very, very good matchup. And of course, the one that I'm looking forward to is the one at halfback. Should be a great match between Justin Marshall, the incumbent, and of course, Sam Pindu's who's had such a great season. Also, Bob Wilson up against Scott Robinson. That should be another beauty. Richie McCora and Alan Tubbs. This is the one I've been waiting for. Of course, they didn't get to face each other back in the round room of Richie McCaw away at the All Blacks. Of course, the experienced campaigners at number six, Ruben Thorne against William Peters. And of course, the giant matchup in the locks. Of course, Norm Maxwell against Glenn Taylor and Chris Jack against the Maimuri. And uh, Tony, I'll let you do the front row. Thanks, mate, Murray, especially. 
And of course, as you can see there, it's a uh, Canterbury battle between Greg Somerville and former Canterbury prop Con Barrel, now playing back in his old colours for Northland. And of course, the hooker battle, that shall be a beauty, the two best hookers in the country, Mark Hammett and John Golding. That should be a great match. And of course, on the other side of the scrub, Greg Fink against the shortest prop in the game, Cameron Chisholm. It should be a great match. And of course, all these players are looking to be selected for the overseas All Black Tour at the end of the season. Yes, it's every rugby player's dream to play for the All Blacks. And of course, some of these guys, it's going to come real tomorrow night when the team gets announced. So here we go. The NPC final is about to get underway. The away team Northland coming on to Jade Stadium. Here we go, Wells. Look, Northland, an exciting lineup that have been playing well with a lot of heart and have captured the imagination of the country. The explosive backs, Rupini, Thalthal and Booker, and Pharaoh have been the Fijian import that have made a difference for, uh, for Northland. And going has had a good season in the, full, uh, in the first five roll, but it's Glenn Taylor, the inspirational captain, that's made the difference today. And now we wait the home team to run off for the final. It's Canterbury. As we are now, Northland wait their opponents, Canterbury, Canterbury making the opposition wait. A very, very good ploy by Canterbury. They've used it efficiently. The trainer knocks on the door and here come Canterbury! Yeah. Onto the ground, led by Captain Ruben Thorne. It's a very tense atmosphere here at North. <laughs> here at Jade Stadium for Northland against Canterbury. Canterbury are the favourites to win this game. But Northland, we always know, will show up a good fight. And the referee for today's match is referee Steve Walsh of North Harbour. He'll have the whistle today. And we're ready for kickoff. So this is what the two teams are playing for today here at Jade Stadium. And we're ready for kickoff. Going to get us underway. Fire it's still on the ground here. And the ball has gone out on the Canterbury 22 and Murray Mexton, this should be a great final, shouldn't it? Oh great, you know, we saw a great one last year with Southland unfortunately they haven't been able to retain the shield this year sorry, the trophy, they've got the shield but they don't have the trophy in well look at this, great moment here by both sides here we go, who's got it? here we go, Canterbury backhand flick Charlie Hoare has it, and the ball's gone out. The ball's gone out, and it'll be a Northland line out. So here we go, great pressure. Here they go, the front of the front. Con Barrel takes it as a chip out, and it's out and halfway. It's out and halfway, it'll be a line out to Canterbury, signalled by touch Judge Honus. And he's landed awkwardly on the ground. Northland number 11, Barrow. And here we go. Mark Hammett to throw in, he'll be looking at Chris Jack or Norm Maxwell. And he goes to Jack and it's gone out, out of touch, and it'll be Northland ball. Oh, and a bit of pressure and tense here coming in the final. And a quick line out, oh, and it's been spoiled by Chris Jack and over the sideline. And it'll be a line out to Northland. Taking his time, oh, and a short throw. Here we go, it goes back. He goes, puts up the chip. <laughs> Leon McDonald takes the ball. Now he's rumbling forward. Gets it off to Murders. Murders puts the chip in. And that's a great relieving kick right in the corner. Five metre line out to Northland. Five metre line out to Northland. Here we go. Take him around the back. Risky stuff. Go and get the kick away ground field. A great relieving kick there. Still no oil in this match. Here we go. Take it in by Chris Jack. Oh! And he's gone down injured. But he gets up. 
That was a brutal tackle. And I think there's got to be a card here. Oh. I tip boom. High, high tackle. You're off. You're off. Oh, he's been given the yellow card. Yeah. Con Darrell against his old teammate, and he'll be in the bin until the next out of play. So the penalty awarded, and they've given up the shot at goal here. They're going to take the tap. Of course, they've got the overlap now. Aiden, and he'll go on his own and score, and Canterbury have the first strike due to Andrew Merton and quick play there from... Murray Cup, but in Bucca. Oh, certainly was great play by Canterbury, showing their class there. The All Blacks are really showing for all this match. So here we go, Andrew Mertens to add the extra two. From right in front, and it's been charged down, good work there. So it's 5-0 for the Canterbury in this final match, and we're halfway through the first half. So here we go, Canterbury lead 5-0 over to Auckland. A minute left to half time. They go deep. It goes down and it's been out on the out just outside the Canterbury 22. North and throw into the line out. They go long over the back. That was a risky move and it hasn't come off. It's out and it'll be a Canterbury throw in. So here we go. The final of the NPC. First division. It's 5 0 to Canterbury. Oh, great rustling forward play again from Ruben Ford. Here they go, they're driving it forward. Northland experiencing first division rugby at its finest. Here they go. Still rustling it up. This is a great contest here in the Ford packs. Still going, it's taken off the bat by Robinson. Delays the pass. Northland have turned it. And it'll go out, and that'll be half time here at Jade Stadium. Referee, well, it's half time, and as the players go into the break, it's Canterbury leading Northland by five points to nil in this NPC First Division final. A great game here. We'll be back after this break. Now there's been a change at half time, we've just got word from the position where Chris Drake took a heavy fall. He is out of the match, replaced by Matt Mustard. Canterbury 5 0. We're ready for the second half. The players are back out there. Let's go up to the commentary pairing of Chris Laidlaw, and he's with Grant Nisbet. Here's a new player for Canterbury, Matt Mustard, in place of Chris Jack. Got big boots to fill. It's his first rep game for Canterbury, and it's such a big game. But he's been training with them all week, so he should know their patterns. And Murden to take the kick off. And Pinder just watches it into touch. Yankees has got it. And also Pinder. Binder's not it. Canterbury's got it. Merton's he's put it a clearance kick. It's not out. Merton's regathered. Merton scored one of the great tries of the NPC. The try to Canterbury. 10-0. A, a simple clearance kick turned into a fantastic try to Canterbury. It's 10-0. Kick to come. Moon's with the kick. Missed his first up kick, but this is a much easier one. And he's missed it again, but he's scored a fantastic try. It's Canterbury 10, Northland 0. And there's the score, Canterbury 10, Northland 0. Keto with the kick. Oh, McDonald with the grubber kick. Oh, it's gone too far, it's gone dead. The 22 dropouts. Pinder. Yeah. And it's gone dead, yeah, it's another 22. A lot of aimless kicking going on this game. Yeah. And it's a line out, that came off Chris uh, Matt Mustin's foot. Heat up. Heat is for the kick through, and it's gone too far. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. McDonald with a drop goal, and it's a way to the right. Vava and Bukka. 
That's a Gabby Bell. And it's gone too far again. So much aimless kicking has gone on this match. Moon's off the drop goal. And Pin does not get down. Yankee. Get off me. Oh. Advantage, blue. Right, Here's Yankee with the kick to touch. Yes. Good clearing kick by Yankee. Now he's got a great tr off his opportunity. Is Michael Johannes? Do it! And he's drawing it too far. Basic moves are just being thrown away by North and under pressure. Go, Matt Mustard's made a big impact since he's come on. Oh. He kicks and regathers. Oh, it's a mall. Oh. And it's just gone too far. Nice by Daryl Gibson. Good stuff. Oh. <laughs> try. And Leo McDonald has scored the try. He was not held, but it's a try. Yeah. <laughs> and that surely should steal it now. 15 0 to North Canterbury with 30 seconds remaining. Okay. Now, Leo McDonald's lining this up. What's this? Hurry up and kick it, you. And over it goes. It's 17 0 to Canterbury. Seconds remaining. And it's play on. 20 seconds to go. Mustin. Mertens. And Mertens is almost over. Mertens has got it stolen. Get it. Yankees there. Oh, you got a you, Next out, full time, boys. <laughs> and it's out. Yeah, full time, Canterbury. Yeah, the NPC champion yeah. for 2003. Yeah, we'll go down with some interviews yeah. with the players. Thank you. And here's Mr. Mike Peterson, chairman of New Zealand Wheelchair Rugby. He presents Canterbury co captains with the NPC, Aaron Major and Mark Hammett. And there they are, the champions of the NPC, yeah. Canterbury, and boy, they deserved it as well. A <laughs> couple of words, yeah. couple of words Darryl, uh, Mark, if you please. Oh, oh mate, you know, yeah. great season for the boys. You know, heartbreak last year against Southland, but you know, yeah. uh, this is what we came for, and this yeah. is what we got. This is a great season for Canterbury. Yeah. You can go, mate. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah. And then you, mate. Yeah. Woo! And there yeah. you have it. Canterbury have wrapped up the 2003 NPC. Yeah. Defeating Northland yeah. by 17 Woo! points to nil. Well, here we are at Jade Stadium. A dramatic final has ended with Canterbury coming out victors over Northland. A great match it was. Canterbury. The Canterbury Reserves have having a run down now. Murray, your thoughts on the match? I thought it was a classic Canterbury match, you know, they played it up hard in the forwards and had some good backline moves. And uh, Matt Mustard coming on at half time certainly boosted an impact in the Canterbury. As we see the Canterbury team just warming down the reserves. It was a great match, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm just so thrilled for Canterbury guys. But Northland, they had hard and they had a great season. Yes, we cannot forget that. Northland made the final. It was a good match. Congratulations to both teams. But for us here, it's goodbye. Hello and welcome. I'm Tony Johnson and this is the Afternoon's Press Conference here. Now I'd like to firstly just say my condolences to uh, Glenn Taylor. It's a very hard for the today, isn't it Glenn? Yes, our uh, forwards and our uh, backs, we didn't go so well today. We have good defense. Yes. Um, you know, but you know, a great season from Northland, wasn't it? Yes, you know, a lot of players. It's great. It's great coming second of the whole lot. Certainly, some newfound talent there in the team, isn't there? Yes, there is. Like a new kicker, Kanoki. That's really all well good. And now we are, of course, on with my lead. We've got the Canterbury co-captain, uh, Mark Hammond, and of course we've got. Uh, the coach of the Canterbury team, Robbie Deans. Well, Robbie, you know, you must be proud of your team winning the Shield, uh, winning the, this marvellous EPC Division 1. Are you happy? Yeah. You're we're happy. Ha 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 
Yeah. You certainly did. You're going to have a beer tonight? Yeah. What's it going to be? Deep draft? Deep draft, yeah. Yes, good stuff. And right now we've got the captain, you know, a very good foot season for your boys, isn't it? Well, we've had our ups and downs and we came with a nut today. And that was bloody marvellous, I tell you, and uh, I'll be having a couple of beers with the boys after and uh, keep you bloody eyes. And uh, I'd just like to uh, say uh, a congratulations and um, a tribute. Um, thank you, Coach, and uh, thank you, Glenn Taylor, and thank you, Nisby, for the Tissue commentary. And uh, thank you to my family, and uh, kids, you know, I was working in a... A bit of a green task force worker, you know, getting paid a, a dollar a, a month, and you know, that wasn't enough for me, so I stepped back up and what's it Well, congratulations, mate, you're coming along, mate. And uh, just one last word, you know, we were halfway through the season when you saw North Harbour on top of the table, you know, you, I knew something was wrong, and you know, the, uh, the scandal, you know, I don't want to delve into that too much, but you know. Oh, well, well, you know, all I can say is, if you have to say is, if you, if you, um, cap salary you caps, you're a bloody idiot. Yes, well spoken there. Mm -hmm. True Kent Haverian winner. And, yeah. um, congratulations, mate. Oh, well you, done. Thank you, thank you. Okay, great, great, great. Well, that's about it. Thank you, Tony. So, Nisbo here. As you can see, Canterbury deserved winners of this year's MPC Division 1 to go along with East Coast in Division 2 and North Otago in Division 3. A great season. And we'll leave you for this year, 2003 NBC, the winners. A deserved Canterbury team who worked hard all season. And they deserve their win today. But it's rough and goodbye. of Northland's challenge for the Ranfilly Shield was proudly brought to you by Tui.